Okay, guys, so we're still in chapter 13. This is going to be the end of chapter 13 for us. Um, and remember, in chapter 13, we're studying ANOVAs. That's analysis of variants. And today, um, it's kind of fun because we're going to just continue with what we were doing, but we're going to take it a step further and we're going to look at what we call a two-way ANOVA today. So when we started chapter 13 a couple of weeks ago, we started with a one-way ANOVA. So that was studying one numerical variable and one factor to see if that factor has an effect on that numerical variable. And today with this two-way ANOVA, what we're going to look at, um, we're, we have two factors. And last class, I know we had two factors, but we weren't interested in both factors. And today we're going to be interested in both factors. So two factors of interest. So it just means that we think or we're, um, we're wondering if there's a difference in means and we're going to look at the two different factors. Okay. Let me just write that here. So do the factors. Oops, wait a minute. Here we go. <laughs> have an effect on the variable. And one might and one might not. So we could have different um, answers here. We could have show that both factors have an effect on the variable. We could show that neither have an effect on the variable. We could show that one has an effect and the other one doesn't. So we have different scenarios that can happen here and we'll see that. Okay. All right, so when we're looking at this two-way ANOVA, like I mentioned before, we're studying the one numerical variable. So that's what is being studied. And when we have these two factors, the two factors are called factor A and factor B. Factor A is what we call our first factor. And it has K levels. And factor B is our second factor. And this is with L levels. So what we're looking at when we have this ANOVA, it's kind of like a two-way table kind of set up. So we have factor B up here and we have factor a over here to the left and we will have didn't really mean to leave that much space something like this sorry doesn't mean to be uneven um and maybe we have like four data values in each box and i want you to recognize each box has the same number of data values Okay, so just so you see, here we go. Okay, so each box will have four data values. So up here, um, L is equal to three levels, right? One, two, three. And then for factor B, we have K is equal to two levels, right? You can see that, one, two. So what we also have is M. So M, I'm gonna write that over here, is equal to the number of replicates. It's just the number of data values in each box. And you know that it's all the same, okay? So let me write that all down. So this is the number of data values. in each cell, okay. and 
every cell has the same number. So if it's four for here, it's gonna be four for here, four for here, and all over, okay? I want you to know M cannot equal one. So I need to have more than one. And really, it's not just about having one observation in each box. It's more about that M minus one is used in a calculation. In that calculation, it's in the denominator. So I can't have zero in the denominator of this calculation. So I can't have M just equal to one. So it has to be greater than one. So just like to throw that in there. It's not something we usually check. I'm just letting you know that's like kind of something there. So let's talk about N. I'm gonna squeeze it in here. So N is going to be equal to our sample size, right? I'm just gonna say total sample size. So you know it's all of these values. And you could calculate this very easily. So N is equal to K times L times N. And what we actually call this whole thing is a K by L factorial design. That's what we call this whole thing. So this is a two by three factorial design. It's not that that comes up a lot, but I really like to give you guys all that information. Okay, so what do we have to do? What are we gonna see when we have this two-way ANOVA, so a second factor? It's going to look a little bit different from last class. I know last class we added that second factor, although we weren't interested in it, just to kind of help build a better ANOVA, right? And it will be a little similar to that, but we have to add something extra to it. So we have to even go a little bit further. And the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we don't have what we call an interaction between factor A and factor B. Meaning I wanna make sure that factor A doesn't change the effect that factor B has on my numerical variable and vice versa. I wanna make sure that factor B doesn't change the effect that factor A has on my numerical variable. So this is called an interaction. So we need to take a look to see if there's an interaction between the two factors. So we can get a visual of this first and we can do a test. I mean, we, it's not that we can do a test, we will be doing a test on this first. Okay. So let's talk about this interaction effect. I know what I already said, but we'll write it down. So an interaction, interaction effect, the effect produced when the levels of one factor interact with the levels of the other factor. So it's influencing the numerical variable. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to have an interaction. We don't want the one factor to interact with the other factor and kind of change that outcome. We don't want that, okay? So we have two different things we're going to look at here. We have what we call the interaction plot. And this is going to be our visual. And we can visually see if there's an interaction or not. And what this is, this is a plot of the averages 
for each cell. So there's one point for each cell and it's that average, right? That's what this interaction plot has in it. Um, and I'm gonna show you in Minitab how we get this plot. It's nothing we're gonna do by hand, which I think we've realized by now we don't really do anything by hand other than writing up our interpretations and our tests. Um, and so we're gonna get this plot and we're going to see, it's gonna be a visual to see if there's an interaction. And then we're actually gonna go through a test, okay? So how do we know from this interaction plot if there is an interaction, okay? So when we're looking at this plot, we look to see if there's like a difference in pat pattern. So there is an interaction. If we see a difference in pattern, And I'm going to put trend. So we might sometimes call this parallel. It's not like we're actually talking about straight parallel lines. Parallel meaning that they follow the same trend, follow the same pattern. <clears throat> okay. So if there's an interaction, there's a difference in pattern. They do not follow the same trend. They do not follow the same pattern. Okay. Then we would say that there's probably an interaction. So what we want to see, and I'm just gonna write this in a different color, okay. We want no interaction. So therefore, what we're looking to see is we want to see the same trend or pattern in the plot. So let's take a look at some of these plots and then, we're, then we'll go ahead and look at the test. This is just a visual. So you know how we kind of get to know the data. We have a visual. Um, we definitely use it there, but there's a reason why we have to do this um, part. And I, and I will get to that shortly. But let's take a look at our notes. So I believe it's on um, page four and page five of our type notes for day 18, where we get a chance to look at some graphs, but on page four, it kind of explains it more. Um, but page five will have some visuals for us. So let's take a look at those. Let's make sure I get into the right thing here. Oops. Yes, but I'm on the wrong page. Okay, so page four right here. So, um, we're looking at visual plots and these interaction plots and it, it says, okay, well, how do I know if something's same or different? So you can read through that. Uh, that's just explaining to you. But here, when we're looking at uh, page five, we can see right here, this is an interaction plot. This is just one, we're going to get the complete plots and we'll see that when we do the work where you actually have more than one graph and we'll look at that in a few minutes. But anyways, this is one of the interaction plots. And what I want you to look at, so we don't have straight lines. We shouldn't expect to get straight lines, right? Because this is the example from last class where we um, were grocery shopping for those seven same items, right? Here's the items down here, right? And the averages, remember, so each point is an average for the cell. Okay? And so this was taking item as a factor and store as a factor instead of item as a block. So now we're looking at it as a true factor. So take a look here. I wanna know like, and these lines are helpful to see, does this follow the same pattern or the same trend for all three different colors? Well, it does, it looks like it does, right? So just looking at this, I'm going to say there probably is not an interaction. Okay. You'll see the right up here, but we'll just keep moving. Now look at this next one. This is a different example. So here we're looking at this interaction plot. Look at this plot here. Do you think this plot follows the same trend? 
I don't think it does, right? Because look at these lines are crossing. When you have lines crossing, that's your first um, like visual cue that there's an interaction because these lines are crossing. So meaning they don't follow the same trend. The lines aren't parallel. They don't follow the same pattern, okay? So these um, two up here, they start high, they end low, right? Where the other three, they start low and end high. It's not that one is wrong and the other one's right. It's just, they don't follow the same pattern. So that's where we're gonna say, we probably have an interaction. So when you see crossing lines, think maybe there's an interaction. This is just a visual. We're going to get to the test shortly. Just wanted to show you some of these. And you could, you could see that right up. Okay. So again here, now look at this one, this interaction plot. I know it's on the next page and it really wasn't part of the things, but I just kept scrolling <laughs> anyways. It's kind of tricky with this one, right? It looks like they follow a similar pattern where on the left, they start lower and on the right, they end higher. But look at this red line. It's, it's more of a dramatic slope, right? To that line than the blue. So it kind of might give you an idea that there could be an interaction. I'm not really sure on this one. This one is not so cut and dry when you're looking at it visually and that's okay. So remember when you're just getting to know your data and you're doing and you're just making analysis from something visual, you just state something that you notice or um, just, you know, you're, it's kind of more of like your opinion, right? Um, so on this one, I could really see if someone would say that there might be an interaction and someone might say that there might not be, okay? You kind of, I could see where this one could go either way, right? That's an interaction plot and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that same trend. You are hoping to see that same trend because if you have the same trend, that means there's no interaction. If there's no interaction between my two um, factors, then that means I can move on and test to see if there's a difference in means. So let's take a look at this here. So let's take a look at the test. Now that's just our visual right, or interaction plot, just a visual. It's just something you're going to think, right, that you see what's going on. The other way to look at, to see if there's an interaction effect here, so the visual, and then we have the test. So the interaction test. Now this will have to do, because this will tell us for sure, if we have um, an interaction or not. So for our interaction test, we're wondering, is there an interaction? And I'm going to say a significant interaction. Okay. So if so, We should not build a two-way ANOVA. So if I have an interaction, then I don't want to test to see if either factor individually has an effect on my numerical variable. So let's take a look at what this test write-up looks like. It's gonna be a shortened test process. It's real short. So we have our null hypothesis. So our null is that there is a non-significant interaction in my HA. There's a significant interaction. I'm just going to add here between the two factors, just to make sure everyone's clear on what we're talking about. So I'm going to write it here too. So if we're trying to show that there's not a significant interaction, then that means we're really hoping for the null, okay? 
And we say we want this. Okay, we're going to report our F test statistic. And I'm going to show you where to find that and where we're going to get all of this stuff shortly. We're going to report degrees of freedom. And of course, there's going to be two because it's an F test statistic. We're going to report the p value. And then we're going to write a quick conclusion. So we're not going to make it a long conclusion, but what we're really looking for is if the p value is greater than alpha, that's what I want, then we cannot reject our null. And we show a non significant interaction. And that's what we want. Okay. So, what we want is a p value greater than 0 0.05. Right, or alpha. We want them. <clears throat> so it's a quick write up. My null, there is a non significant interaction, or you could say um, no significant interaction. There is not a significant <laughs> interaction, something like that. HA, there is a significant interaction. Report F, degrees of freedom, P, and then a quick write up. Quick. I don't even need to see this part. You could just say, um, you could just say, we do not show a significant reaction or we do show a significant re interaction, something like that, okay? You could just do a quick conclusion. So this is our test. Our test will tell us for sure if there's an interaction where the plot is just saying, if we think we see an interaction, okay? So there's the difference. The plot we do when we're getting to know our data, the test is what we're actually going to do in our test write-up, okay? So we need to build the model and um, so we can see what we have going on so we can actually take a look at this. So I'm going to um, start with this example and I want to pull this up here. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, here it is. I have to look to see what page this is on because I have page 10 written down and I'm not so sure <laughs> at this point if that's correct. Okay, so that's not really what I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna show you this and then we can work through an example all together. This is like old school output, but it still looks the same. Look at this, this is my analysis of variance. I'm just gonna enlarge this so we can see. This is my analysis of variance, right? Right here, we don't even need the top part. We're just looking at this. Right here, there we go, okay, my analysis of variance. Take a look at my analysis of variance. When we have a one-way ANOVA, it would just have factor A, my error, and my total, right? Last class, we introduced a second factor and it was blocking. We weren't really interested in it, so it had factor A and then my block variable would be next and then my error and then my total. Now we have another row in here. So we have factor A, factor B, and then factor A times B. A times B is my interaction. Okay, we will add this to our ANOVA. I will show you how to add it to our ANOVA. But what I want you to see is this line, the factor A times factor B, this row is my information I'm using for my test. So if I'm doing a test for interaction, my F test statistic is this 0.84. My P value is 0.548. My degrees of freedom, six comma 24. So my degrees of freedom is this row for A times B and comma my error, okay? So I just want you guys to see, highlighted in yellow here, my ANOVA, this is what I'm reporting when I'm doing my interaction test. So we can see the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, so that means that we can't reject the null. So that's a good thing. That means that we have a non-significant interaction. 
So that's a good thing. That means that A and B don't interact with one another. So that means factor A is not changing the way factor B interacts or affects my numerical variable. So that's a good thing. And then that means I can move on and test my means. Okay. So that's my interaction. It's a real short, quick test rate up. That's something we have to do before we do our actual ANOVA test rate up, like what we've been doing last class. Okay. So that's my interaction. I'm going to show you when we do an example how to build this model, but I wanted to show you where you get that information from because I think that's really important. Okay, for us. Okay. So now I'm going to stop this share and we'll we'll take a look at our notes again. So that's the interaction. Now, if there is not an interaction, then we can move on and test what we call the main effects. Okay. So I'm going to actually write that here. So if we do not have a significant interaction, between the two factors, then we will test what we call the main effects. The main effects, this is similar to our regular ANOVA test. It's just now we have two because we have two factors. So that's what we're going to look at now. So for our main effects, for our main effects test, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the fact of a factor on the variable. And we're going to ignore the effect of the other factor. So meaning we're just going to study one at a time. So that's, I'm going to write that here. <laughs> Look at one at a time. That's what we're going to do. So we're just going to study one at a time. Okay. So we have our ANOVA test. It's going to be very similar to our test that we've been looking at. Okay. It's going to be a shortened test process. So we're going to look at our null. And our null is that the means are all the same, right? So mu one equals mu two equals all the way up to however many mu's we have, right? My H A is going to be at least one mu is different. We're going to report the F test Statistic, we're going to report the degrees of freedom. Remember there's two. And we're going to report the p-value and a conclusion. So it's kind of like the, the uh, interaction test with what you're including. Sorry, I just realized I'm low <clears throat> the screen. And then we're going to write the conclusion, which the conclusion is the same as always right? Um, it's if that factor has an effect on the numerical variable. So let me just write my ANOVA test. This is going to be shorter. For main effects than what we've been doing. And we need to do this twice.
I need to do this two times. Once for each factor. Okay, so we're going to do this test right up twice. Then, of course, actually go back to red here. If we reject the null for either factor, then we move on to two keys, right? Comparison to see what's different. So you're going to test it for factor A. If you reject your null, you're gonna move on to two keys for factor A. Then you're gonna go back, do this for factor B. If you reject your null, you're gonna do two keys for factor B. So this could get very long. So this is why we don't ever test the assumptions or requirements inside the test because there's just too much going on. You know what the assumptions and the, the uh, requirements are, right? It's always the same for the ANOVA. So um, we only actually check out the requirements for the NPP and the normality test and the equal variance, the Levines, right? So that's if you are asked. Okay. All right. So I have a flow chart and I'm, instead of doing it in class, I think I'm going to write it up and then post it on the notes, but I could just show you in my handwritten notes, um, what I have, like what I would normally do in class. So it's a flow chart for a two-way ANOVA. And it just helps you decide like what you're doing. So you're going to do your interaction test. If your p-value is smaller than alpha, you stop and you write a conclusion. We're gonna take a look at an example of that in a minute, like that conclusion that you're going to write. If your interaction test results in a p-value greater than 0.05, then that means you move on to the test for main effects. You need to test factor A and factor B separately. Okay, and I'm going to show you this. If your factor A has an alpha or a p-value, I'm sorry, less than my alpha, then you move on to two keys and you rank your means with your underlines. If it's not, you stop. There's no effect. That means that the means are the same for factor A. Then the same thing happens for factor B. If my p-value is less than alpha, then I move on to two keys and I my ranked means and I write a conclusion. If factor B um, has a p-value greater than 0.05, it's really hard to read there because I'm squeezing it in, then you stop. That means that the means are the same, right? There's no effect. So I will I'll write this up and I will post it because I don't want to take a bunch of time writing it out, but I think it's worthwhile for you guys to see. So I'll write that up um, and I'll post it separate from the notes. I'll have it like its own thing and I'll say the flow chart for this test. I want to go ahead and take a look at an example so then you guys can work on the daily and uh, practice all this stuff. But let's take a look at an example. So I have two different examples I want to look at because I have one example where um, my interaction, um, I am showing an interaction, so I need to stop and make a conclusion. And then I have another one where there is no interaction. So let's take a look at the one where there's an interaction first. And that's going to be example on page five, I'm sorry, page 30, it's example five. So we'll take a look at that one first. And then um, we'll look at page 17, example two. I just like you guys to know and see it here written down which examples we're gonna look at. We will look at example five first, and then we'll move on to example two. So the data here, which I have to change my view because I forgot to download the data, but the data is under day 18, if you look in our notes. And um, I think, okay, so I have two different data. I have this day 18 examples, we'll use that. And the plant data will be example two, and we'll use that in a few minutes. So I, I'm actually going to download them both right now so I have them. And then we can share our screens. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen now and maybe. 
Okay, I'm gonna get my mini tab for my day 18 examples. So what I did was there's multiple examples. It's like a long notes. I just put all the data in one um, file here. And I don't think it has the plant is, is what I'm noticing. And I think I just, that's why I have that one second. Okay. okay, so here's my data. There's a lot going on because there's a lot of different examples. So we have to know what we're studying. So I actually want to change and share my screen to the notes so we can actually take a look at what we're studying here. So we're going to scroll all the way down. Let me just do this to page 30. Here it is, page 30, example five. Okay, so what we're studying here, I'll just give you the gist. We're studying um, the stage of Alzheimer's patients and how music influences them, okay? So um, what we're looking at is what we call their agitation level, like so how like irritated they are, right, by the music. So if it's it, so maybe it's not as high, so maybe it's a good thing, or maybe it's not a good thing, right? So um, we could see here in our information, our data given to us, really nice format, right? This is how we like to see it. It's so easy to read. It's easy to see what's going on. And I love this right now. So you could see the early stage and then we have middle stage. So that's our group, right? And then we have the three different types of music, right? Piano, Mozart, and easy listening. And then we have the numbers. So remember what I said, the numbers here. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's five data values in this cell. There's going to be five in every single cell, okay? I want you to understand that. This is a two by three factorial design. Okay, so I have two groups or two stages of Alzheimer's, and then I have three types of music. Okay. So what we're looking at here is agitation. So that's, um, they ranked that with numbers. So that's going to be our numerical variable. And we want to know if um, music, right, has an effect on the agitation level. We also wanna know does the stage of Alzheimer's have an effect on the agitation level, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these two different factors, but we first need to see if there's an interaction between the two factors. So we keep in mind, agitation is my numerical variable, right? Because we need to know that when we, when we look at our mini tab. So now let's go, go over and take a look at our mini tab. I wanna show you where to get these um, the plots and, and where we're gonna look here in mini tab. Okay, so just take a look here. So it's, it's not these first four and then it's not the second four. I'm gonna delete those. Hopefully mini tab doesn't get upset with me. Right here. So I could see now it's this, my new column two, agitation, stage, and then music tab. Okay, it's column four. So I just deleted those because those are for other examples and I don't need them. And sometimes it's kind of a pain to have all this extra stuff. So don't hesitate to delete things you don't need. Like today, this is a perfect example. All right, so let's take a look at the interaction plot and just get a visual and see what's going on. So I will start at stat ANOVA and it's all the way at the bottom you will see it's called interaction plot. So right there, this is perfect, it's right there. We can click on that. My response or my numerical variable is agitation. And then my factor, I have stage and music type because I have two factors. So I need to include them both, okay? And then from here, I'm going to click on display full interaction. And this will give me um, like two different plots to look at. You don't need to click anything in options. Um, if you want to do anything in here, you can. It's not necessary. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. So here we have a full interaction plot. So this is what I was saying in class, like I was just looking at one at a time and here I have both of them. And all it is, is you can see, it's like the axes have changed, okay? So here you can see we're looking at early and middle, right? Down here on my horizontal. And then the three different colors are by music type. 
This top one on the right is just the opposite. I have for my horizontal, the music type, and then by the colors is the stage, okay? So we can look at them both. So I'm kind of concerned when I look at this lower left one because this blue line, the easy listening, has a different trend to, to the line than the other two. So I'm not, I'm not crazy about that. When I see that, it makes me think I have an interaction here. They cross. This one up here, it's harder to tell, right, on the right side because it does appear to follow a similar pattern, right? It just, it's, they cross, but the, and that's okay on this one, but because they still follow a similar pattern, but the blue is definitely kind of like more dramatic, right? Like a, a stronger slope either way. Um, so that one's hard to tell if there's an interaction, but down here in the lower left, I'm definitely seeing an interaction here, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the test to see if there actually is an interaction. That's just the visual and we'll come back to the visuals. I'm gonna save this and, and hang on to this. So let's actually look at the test. So the test, we're gonna go and build our model. So we'll go to stat, ANOVA, general linear model, and I'm going to fit my general linear model. So I wanna show you how to do this. So the same place we've been going for the last couple of weeks. So my response variable, of course, is my numerical variable, the same as always. In my factors, I'm going to add both factors, so stage and music type. But remember what I said earlier in the lecture, we need to add another factor, and that's, that's the interaction, or another term, I should say, and that's the interaction term, where it's stage times music. So for here, I need to go into the model button down here, and I need to add that term. So I'm going to click on model, you can see I only have my factors up here and I can add different terms. So I'm going to highlight both factors. And this is interaction through order two. I don't need to touch that. It will automatically make it into the multiplication. So I'm going to click add. So all I need to do here is highlight the two factors and then click add. And now we can see down here in my, ter my terms in my model, I have stage with the asterisk music. So it's like stage times music. That's my interaction term. So I need to make sure I have that in there. So I'm going to click OK, and I'll click OK one more time. So let's take a look at our ANOVA here. So when I'm looking at my ANOVA, we're just looking at this portion of the ANOVA right here. Now for the interaction test, I'm looking at the third row down, stage times music. And I need to test to see if there's an interaction Remember, if there is an interaction, then I'm not going to move on to test my main effects. That means that one term is interfact, one factor is interacting with the other factor, and it's changing the effect on that numerical variable. Then you don't really get a good read. Look at what's happening. My p value for this third row is very small. My F test statistic is 17.53. That means there is an interaction. Because remember what I'm looking for is a large p-value, larger than 0 0.05. So that means I do have an interaction on this one. We thought maybe we saw it on that one plot, but it, that's again, just a visual and it's kind of like a guess, right? It's just what a feeling and what you see. This is the actual test. This is what you actually base it on. So I do have an interaction based on my F test statistic being 17.53 and my p-value being very small. Okay. So that means I'm rejecting my null, that there's no significant interaction. So that means that there is a significant interaction. So I'll just do a quick write up. Okay. And you'll see in the, the type notes, the little write up for that. Let's see here. I went through all the other stuff first. There it is. So you can see what I'm reading. Okay, that third row. Here's my write up. And there is a significant interaction. So that means you do not go on to test for main effects. So now I want to make a conclusion. Now, this can be the tricky part, those conclusions, right? Because I don't have like a template. 
So a conclusion is for here, when you do not test your main effects, you're just going to draw a conclusion based on what you see in your plot. So let's just see what this conclusion is and we'll go back and look at the plot and, and um, you know, see if we can see it. So it just says based on the sample data and, and actually you could get this from um, your descriptive statistics or sample. The higher agitation levels are with early Alzheimer patients who listen to easy listening music, okay? So let's just take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna show you the plot and the descriptive statistics. Here's my descriptive statistics. When we do this, it will be separate. So you'll look at the agitation and separate it out by the stage. And then you'll look at agitation separated out by music type separately. Remember the mean, the sample mean, look at 19 and 17, the mean 22, 11, 21. So what we're saying is that the highest level is for early, look at early and easy listening. We can see it here, right? Let's take a look at the plot. Not the box plot, but the interaction plot. We can see it both spaces, okay? So down here in this plot in the lower left, look it up here, early listening, or early, I'm sorry, <laughs> early stage over here is the highest, and that's the blue, which is the easy listening. It's just something I make a conclusion about, okay? Over here, we could see it as well in this plot. The highest point is for the easy listening, and it's the blue, which is the early stage. So we can see it from our sample means, we could see it from the plot. It's easier to see it in the plot and make a conclusion. I'll tell you that. Although it's sometimes tricky to make conclusions based on the plots. So um, a conclusion, just like usual, if whatever it's asking about, if you're interested in something, um, like the question might be interested in something specific, then you'll address that. If not, then you could just talk about maybe something on the high end or on the low end, right? So on the low end, you can mention something down here even, right? So early with Mozart seems to be the least amount of agitation, right? It's harder to see that Oops, over here, right? Oh, no, it is right here, sorry. Early with Mozart is the lower side, okay? So you can make um, a, a different kind of conclusion. So that's what you do if you do have an interaction, you make a conclusion based on your plot. So that's why the plot's important to us. So let's take a look at the other example, which I said was on page 17 and it's example two. So let's take a look at that. And I don't wanna spend a ton of time on the write-up or anything because we're used to that. I just wanna show you the mini tab stuff. I want you to be able to do this. And I'm not really even showing you all of the mini tab stuff because you know how to do this. I'm hoping you know how to build box plots. I'm hoping you know how to get descriptive statistics by this time, right? We've been doing this for a couple of weeks. So this problem right here is about tomato varieties and the yield. So the yield's just how much we got. So um, we have different varieties. So variety one, two, and three for tomato plants. And then density, like, so how dense they are. So 10, and so it's rated by 10, 20, 30, 40, right? So um, right here, so we can see the density here, okay? Then we have these values and this is the yield, right? So that's my response, that's my numerical variable. So I already downloaded this data into Minitab and I want to work through some of these Minitab steps with you because I think that's the trickiest part. So just keep in mind here for um, Minitab that the yield is my numerical variable, then the plant variety is going to be one factor and then the plant density is going to be the second factor. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So that mini tab is in, hang on, I have to stop sharing to do this. So the mini tab is under plant file or something, mini tab, something like that. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, here it is. I defined my other mini tab. There we go. Okay, so on this mini tab, I just labeled, and I was just trying to be quick, Y, A, and B. So Y meaning that that's my numerical variable, A is factor A and B is factor B. It's actually really nice if you have them labeled better than that. So maybe yield, right? Um, and then factor A, I already forgot what that was. Variety and then density. Okay. There we go. Okay. I think it's actually better to have it like that. So let's see if there's an interaction. We're going to take a look at the plot. So stat, ANOVA, all the way at the bottom, interaction plot. My yield is my numerical, my factors, variety, and density. And I want to just check the display full interaction. Remember, this is just my visual to see if they follow the same pattern. Okay, so it's a little tricky on this one. I think they, for the most part, I'm, when you look at both of these, they look like they follow a similar pattern. I can see over here on the lower left, it looks like that red and purple kind of cross a little bit or maybe overlap here. Uh, but it still looks like a similar pattern and we could see that over here too, right? Where the blue and the red are touching and they cross a little bit, uh, but it looks like a very similar pattern. So it's kind of hard for me to tell. I'm, I'm going to guess that there probably isn't an interaction because it's not like it crosses and goes a totally different pattern. It has the same trend. Um, so I'm going to say that there is no interaction, but it's really, it's, you can't just say it for sure unless you do your test. Okay. So let's go into our ANOVA. We'll build our ANOVA. So stat ANOVA general linear model. I'm going to fit the general linear model. So here my yield is my numerical variable. My factors are variety and density. And I'm going to click on model. By clicking on model, I can add that variety times density term for my interaction. So highlight them both at the same time and then click add and you can see it add down here in the bottom. So I'll click okay and I can click okay again. So remember here, we're just interested in the analysis of variance. So first I need to take a look at my interaction test and that will be studying the third row variety times density I'm going to report my F value of 0.84 and my P value of 0.548. That's a good thing. It's greater than 0 0.05. So that means I'm showing no significant interaction. So that's good. Okay. So that's my first test. Now that means I can move on to my main effects. Okay. So remember our main effects test means we're going to test them each individually, factor A and factor B. So you could say for factor A or for the factor named variety, okay? My null is that they're all the same, all the means, and my HA is all, and that they're not all the same, right? At least one is different, okay? My F test statistic for variety is going to come from that row, variety. And it's just like a one-way ANOVA. You're going to report that 103.34 F test statistic. My degrees of freedom are two, comma 24. So it's that row, comma your error. My p-value is very small. So since it's very small, that means I am showing that there's a difference. That means that I'm showing that variety has an effect on the yield. So in that case, I will move on to two keys for that and my ranked means. Now my second test for main effects will be on density. So I kind of label them like that. Then, I'm, then I say, okay, my null is that all the means are the same. My HA is that at least one is different. I'm going to report my F test statistic as 18.23 with degrees of freedom of three comma 24. My P value again is very small here. So I am rejecting my null. So I am showing that there's a difference, meaning that density does have an effect on the yield. So in that case as well, I will follow up with two keys to see what is different. Okay. So these tests are pretty quick and pretty short and you have one output. 
So you use this one ANOVA for all three tests, your um, test for interaction, your test for main effects on factor one or factor A, and the test for main effects for factor B. You use the same output. You do not change anything, right? You use everything the same. Now, when you go and do something like box plots or even your descriptive statistics, I just wanna show you, you'll do box plots with groups like we're used to doing, and you will choose your numerical variable yield and then only one factor at a time variety, and then just click okay. And you want these separate, right? And then you'll do it again for density. So you're gonna do everything separately same thing when you take a look at descriptive statistics, stat, basic, display, you'll look at yield and then maybe you're gonna look at the density. You're gonna look at them both. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong box. I didn't click down below. And then down here you would put density and then separately you're gonna go back in and get variety. So you want them like that. Okay, so just remember we're studying the mean. Right? And this is how you rank your means, smallest to largest, right? From here, okay? And then you're gonna do two keys the same way as we're used to doing two keys, okay? And you're interested in, in looking at two keys based on whatever um, your factor is that you're studying, right? So your two keys, you're only just gonna look at that one factor that you're studying, not both. So you do everything kind of separately. Okay. All right, any questions for me? I know that was kind of a lot. There's kind of a lot going on with that. Any questions on that stuff for me? So on today's daily, it's one problem, but it's long. Um, you have to identify your factors, your um, numerical variable. I ask you to get those box plots separately and the descriptive statistics separately. Then what you need to do is you need to get your interaction plot and you're going to study that interaction plot, okay? Then you will go through and do all the testing process, okay? Any questions for me? All right, so let me open this up for you and, um, and then you can start work, work on your daily. All right. Okay, there, there it is, it should be open now in the data. Sorry, that took me a minute. Okay.